Hello friends, welcome to part 1 of this video series. In this video, I will explain how to set up an Infoblox virtual appliance for the first time. But before we get started, if you already have a running Infoblox instance or if you already know how to set it up for the first time, you can skip this video and go to part 2 of this video series. Now with that being said, let's get started. First of all, you will need a copy of Infoblox Virtual Appliance. You can download an evaluation copy from the Infoblox website. For that, we need to go to So we'll go to Google and just type in Infoblox DDI Evaluation and you can just click on this link. So you have to submit this form and click on download now. So what will happen is you will get a download link uh, being sent to your registered email ID. Since I've already done that, I already have that link and when I click on this link, it will take me to this page, which is their product evaluation portal. From here, you can download different uh, virtual appliances based on specific to your hypervisor. And also you can download some of, uh, you know, useful documents like, like admin guide, CLI guide, API guide, etc. So since I'm going to run this on uh, a VMware workstation, I'm going to download this file here. Okay. So I am opened the, the workstation and I've all, actually I have already downloaded the file. So I'll just instantiate that virtual instance or virtual appliance. For that, I can just click on open and I'll select this. I have to accept this agreement. Click on next. And this is where you have to select the model. So Infoblox are currently providing two types of model. The Trinsic, uh, the T is the normal uh, version that we are going to uh, instantiate now because this model, the T version support DNS, DHCP, and IPAM. Whereas the TR model, the one that you see here, is used for reporting. But now since we are going to uh, instantiate a virtual appliance for our DNS and DHCP testing, we will go ahead and use this T model, A15. And uh, we'll just, won't change anything here, and we'll click on import. So this normally takes around two to three minutes. So what I'll do is like, I'll pause the video for the time being. And once this is set up, I'll come back. Okay, so we are back and uh, the instantiation, instantiation is complete and it's in the login prompt. So the default username and password, the username is admin and the password is infoblox okay so we have logged in so now what we need to do is the first step is to configure an IP address which will be within our network by default the infoblox will set an IP address of 192.168.1.2 192 but since I'm in a 192.168.0 0 dots zero slash 24 network so i will have to change the ip address for that the command is set network so now i have to enter the ip address which i want to configure for this appliance Right now, I don't have to. I don't want to configure the IPv6 address, so I'll give it as no. I don't have. I, all right, again, I will explain to you what this grid member is in the coming videos. But as of now, I'll just select no. And I'll confirm this. So 
the system will do a restart because we have modified the the IP address of the system so it will be back in like maybe one minute or so So we are back. So let's log in again. And let's confirm if the IP has been set correctly. So the command is show network. And we could see that the IP address that I've provided has been set. So the next thing is setting a temporary license. So for that, set temp underscore license, that's the command and firstly we will need a nios license so i will select four and since our model is 815 i'm going to select two so again the, there will be after applying the license there will be a system restart a nios restart so we will wait till the system gets restarted and and gets back It's back and let's go. So now we again have to set some more temporary license before we can actually start accessing the UI. Well, that's not a mandatory step, but yeah, uh, but since we are going to use it for our DNS and DHCP, let's install that license also. So, what we'll do is we'll select two. In one go, we'll get DNS, DHCP, and grid. And again, in future, uh, I'll tell you what grid is, but for the right for the time being, we'll just use two. Okay, so now let's try accessing so that. Uh, you know, they're accessing the Infoblox UI. Let's get to the Chrome browser. So, yeah, so we are inside. But the reason why you're getting this error is because this we are accessing the Infoblox appliance through HTTPS and the certificate that the Infoblox has currently sent back is not our browser is not able to recognize that. And hence we are getting this message that this cannot be trusted. But we know that we are apply I mean, accessing the right device, and hence I'm going to click on proceed. And there we go. We are able. We are inside the the Infoblox UI, and let's log in again. The username password is the same. Admin Infoblox.
So we'll just accept it. Okay, there we are. We are inside the the Infoblox virtual appliance. So let's see what all things we have done today. Okay, so first we downloaded that eval copy and instantiated that VM on our hypervisor. Then we did the initial setup. And when I say initial setup, we did uh, the temporary licenses. And then we set the network configuration, we set the IP address. And then finally, using that IP address, uh, using HTTPS protocol, we were able to access the, the UI. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it informative. And I'll catch you in the next. Thanks for watching.